and welcome to another week's episode of the Market Pulse Pros and Pioneers podcast. And joining me this week is Nick Jones from Pipeline 44. Hi, Nick. Howdy. Nice to see you. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Um, I feel like we're getting into a nice routine with the show now. We're, we've, we've had quite a few business owners. We've had quite a few uh, seasoned marketers and agency owners on the show. And just to, you know, if, you've, if you join the show for the first time, you've never listened before, what we're aiming to do here is to help educate um, small business owners in things that they can do that are maybe a little bit different on things that they should stop doing in their market and that will make them more successful. Our goal is to try and get as many businesses as we can over that scale up stage and into making, you know, seven, eight figures in their business. That's lofty ambitions, but that's where we are in the podcast. We want to make a difference. There's a lot of snake oil in the industry and we're here to kind of separate out the, the uh, the genuine from the good, the bad, and the ugly. Hi, and thanks for joining us for the show. I'm Paul, founder here at Javelin Content Management. We specialize in getting ideas out of your head, down into video, and out to your social media through repurposing and efficient content strategies. If you want to find out how you can convert your ideal audience into paying customers, reach out to us. Dot com, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the episode. Rest of the episode. So before we before we get started, um, Nick here. Um, You've got, you know, if I'm looking at my, my notes here that I've got from, from your background, Nick, you've got a tremendous background across a few different industries. So you've been in manufacturing tech and then into digital marketing. Um, but what I really like is, is that you kind of echoed some of what I've just said there in terms of, you know, you want to use your position um, at, at Pipeline 44 to educate and support business owners in, in getting some of the right marketing done. Not, not some of the things that are being peddled out there that, that maybe work or don't work. So in your own words, I guess, if you could uh, give us a bit of a background, how you got where you are. Yeah, sure. So uh, for all those uh, marketeers out there, I, I actually started in sales and I consider myself a sales, salesman, not, not typically a marketeer. Uh, but when I was a kid, I was uh, a bit of a waste of space and uh, left school, didn't go to university. And I thought, you know, I need to get a job. I chucked a CV out online and I got given this opportunity who knows why? Um, and I ended up in channel sales and it was, it was, I mean, long story short, but it was the best thing that could have happened to me, to be honest. So I spent the first eight years of my working life traveling around the world, managing distributors, selling manufacturing, uh, manufactured product, um, in all sorts of different places, uh, predominantly Middle East and, and North Africa and the States and various others. Um, but yeah, that was, that was kind of my start. And then, and then after that, I kind of learnt there's a very clever sales guy who who does all sorts of things around on the internet um, at the moment, a guy called Marcus Kauke, and he once said to me that salespeople make the best CEOs. And I think he's uh, absolutely right. <laughs> Not that that sort of uh, plays into my current position specifically, but uh, you get to learn business from all sorts of different angles when you're managing channel partners and when you're traveling and you're doing deals, uh, including finance and obviously sales and all facets of, of business, but, but marketing is obviously going to be a big one of them. Now, I don't make a huge distinction between sales and marketing. I think they're just two different parts of the same process. I believe your previous guest had something similar to say about that, that subject. But um, yeah, so I went into business for myself just after that. And I don't know how many companies later, some, some failed, some succeeded. I find myself now back in a position where I'm investing in and supporting businesses that kind of are fun, that float my boat, that are interesting, a great wide range of things. And the one that I came across that I'm taking perhaps a little bit more seriously is this social selling digital marketing space. Um, and it's because I came back to the UK having spent a lot of time abroad a few years ago now, and I wanted to get involved in kind of the startup, small business, the micro business. Um, world. And it just struck me how things have changed since I was starting my first business, um, particularly with the advent and the the growth of all these social platforms. And what really angered me was the plethora of absolute garbage advice that is out there. And it's become kind of a cliche now, but, you know, five, 10 years ago, it wasn't being talked about quite so much. And there's so much bad advice out there. And that, that really angers me because, you know, starting a company and growing a company and selling a company is, is flipping hard. It's hard enough without being distracted by 
people who are selling training courses and masterminds and all this other nonsense that gets trolled around the internet when they when it's compelling nonsense and people listen because they don't know what else to listen to and so they spend their hard earned money trying to start these businesses and trying to grow these businesses on on nonsense that just perpetuates the status quo or indeed drives them to failure and and that that is uh, criminal in my opinion so that's kind of the short version of of why why we are where we are and pipeline 44 we started four or five years ago with a couple of other people in in the industry one of them sam uh, is uh, linkedin and chris is a social marketing kind of guy specialist guru whatever you want to call him and we came together and we said look we can do something about this so we've put a fair amount of money put a couple of million quid into developing a platform and some tech um but primarily we've we've our mission is to disrupt a marketplace that is otherwise full of shiny pennies and things that aren't really going to help the average day-to-day business person to start, grow, and create something worthwhile. Yep. I, you know what? I'm, I'm sat nodding along to, to what you were saying there. If I had a penny for every time I get a business owner come to me and says, do you know what, Paul? I've just spent the last six months pouring my money into SEO. And I've seen nothing from it yet. And two things spring to my mind is one, I had nobody told you that SEO takes longer than six months. And two, how much money have you poured into SEO as a small business owner to try and get some results? And it's not to say that you can't do it as a small business, but you've got to be very savvy. You've got to have the right connection. Pay-per-click's another one. You know, Paul, um, what can I get for £300 a month for pay-per-click? Uh, you will get precisely the sum of £300 subtracted from your pocket. That is pretty much what you'll get in, in most places, even if you try and do it yourself. You... And that's, um, yeah, and, that, and that's the good end of the spectrum, isn't it? There, there are plenty of stories of people spending 10, 20, 30,000 pounds on memberships and programs that promise the earth and, and, and just deliver nothing, yeah. uh, putting people into debt. And, you know, the most frustrating thing is, in, in, not just in this country, but I'm British, right? So I'm going to talk about Britain. I, I think we've got an awful lot of great people with an awful lot of fantastic ideas and actually as a population average those those ideas are pretty good and, and we deserve the chance and the opportunity to see them turn into something and let's be real not not everybody's idea is going to turn into something but they deserve a chance and along the way if it isn't the right time for that idea or if they're not right the right person to execute that idea that's okay because they'll learn something but to drag people down in this this world of of groupthink and noise is yeah it's a real shame i love it i love it um we should have met a long time ago and um i like this um so the very first question i ask to um our guests and and for a marketing agency owner or a marketeer it's particularly prominent for me is what is if you if you could speak to a small business owner today who's who's setting out uh you know, they maybe got a bit of revenue under their belt. They're starting to get a bit of um, disposable revenue together and they're wondering what the next thing they should invest in is. What would be your number one tactic, strategy, tool that y- you don't see anybody else really using at the moment from experience that, that works for most businesses or maybe for a specific industry? Down to you. Leave that down to you. It's, it's a really difficult question, Paul, to be honest, because there's such a plethora of things that need attention when you're growing a business. Um, if we focus on marketing, um, I think the vast majority, and when I say the vast majority, you know, I'm referring to the startups and the micros, but I'm also referring to the multi-billion dollar enterprise organizations around the world. Uh, the vast majority of people get this wrong, and that is marketing message. It's very easy to put information in front of people. And which is uh, what most people occupy their time with when it comes to marketing. They, they see marketing as something they must do and use that time to communicate information at all costs in, in every way possible to people that they hope might be interested. And, and of course, that's riddled with all sorts of problems, uh, primarily that the vast majority of people that you throw, you splurt this information towards uh, number one, won't want whatever it is that you're trying to flog them. And number two, if they do, will not be in the right mindset to be consuming that information and making a, a, a decision about buying something. And I think that probably describes 90 something percent of audiences. And so I think for, for when it comes to growth, 
whether you're turning over a thousand pounds a month and you want to make 10, whether you're a, a, a million pound company, you want to make 10 million, whether you're a half a billion, you want to make a billion. I think the one thing that makes the biggest difference in marketing terms is actually getting your message right. And uh, message is widely misunderstood. I think most people talk about uh, mission when it comes to message, what they're trying to achieve. And therein, therein lies the rub. Most people talk about themselves when it comes to message. And frankly, nobody cares. There's this old horrible, so people buy from people they like and blah, blah, blah. It's all garbage. Nobody, nobody cares. People buy stuff that's going to solve a problem for them. And that's it. And that might be a, a problem that they've created. It might be a desire, but whatever it is, it's something that's going to satisfy them in some way. The challenge that we have is that those people usually don't understand the cause of that problem well enough to make informed decisions about the best solutions. So message for me is something that people don't spend near enough time on. It's actually not that complicated, but it requires a little bit of thought and a little bit of work and a lot of testing to get it right. And I think the second component to that is that message when it comes to marketing isn't about communicating something as an end result, as an objective. Message needs to be designed to create a mindset shift as it's delivered through various stages of a marketing process. And it's this idea of mindset shift in our audiences that I would probably therefore put at the top of the list of number one thing to do from a marketing perspective for pretty much every organization. Um, we've worked fairly recently, I can't name them, but with some of the some, some extremely large organizations in, in, the, in the multiple billions, um, think huge payment processing organizations, about as far as I can go. Um, and some of our team were looking at their email marketing, for example, and, and you'll be baffled at, at quite how basic and not fit for purpose it is. It's just it emails arbitrarily scheduled based on whatever software's default, software defaults they happen to have to communicate information to people who don't even know what they're talking about and don't want the email in the first place. Um, yeah. So so this applies across the board, but this idea of mindset shift and therefore understanding the mindset of your audience before you communicate with them, before you have a touch point or, or whatever you want to call it, understanding what that is and therefore then figuring out how you're going to shift that existing mindset through however many stages it takes to a point where they can't do anything but buy what you're selling. Yeah. Obviously losing various people on the way, typical funnels and processes. But uh, yeah, that would be absolutely at the top of my list from that point of view. Um, I'm going to be cheeky and add another one, if that's okay. Go for it. Um, because I think it, I think it applies spades to startups and micro businesses and you know we li we live in a, a boom age when it comes to people trying trying out going out on their own and that is simply to talk to as many people as possible about what it is that you're doing and that may seem in conflict with what i've just said about message but we live in this post covid age where everybody thinks it's a great idea to work from home and naturally if we're working for ourselves we're sat in an office at home but we sit in the same four walls on our own most of the time staring at screens and we don't actually talk to people. Now, I'm not going to go off on some kind of rant about social psychology, but, um, but when it comes to business and marketing, we find, I found you know, the vast majority of people who are starting up now communicate far less about what they're doing and talk far less about what they're doing because they become trapped with what they think they should be talking about. They'll post on social platforms and they'll contrive those posts, but very rarely will they actually tell people, this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm up to, and this is why I'm doing it. But I think those two things in combination, that volume of communication with as many people as humanly possible, just to get the noise and the message out there about what you're doing and time spent on that message, crafting it and really honing in on the, the psychology of the audience to understand their mindset. And therefore, how are you going to shift that mindset from complete stranger to willing buyer or desperate yeah. buyer is preferable for most of us, right? Yeah. So yeah, them are two. If I could be so bold. No, that's, that's, that's really cool. And I appreciate the, uh, the thought that you clearly put into those, Nick. Um, and I, I'd agree. I'd agree. On the whole, I'd agree. Um, I think 
know, like, and trust is something that I do, I do live by, right? So my main business, is, as anybody who's listening to the show will know, is, is about video. It's about repurposing video and it's about telling people stories. And, and video creates that trust like nothing else does. To your point entirely, you can put out all the video in the world. You can talk till your ears drop off. But if you're not seeing the right things, nobody's going to care that they trust you because they either don't know what you're selling or how you can help them. They don't know what the problem is and they don't know how they feel about it until you show them how they feel about it. So I think you're absolutely right. I think no like and trust comes at the end point. Like that's, you know, maybe you've got two or three potential shortlisted vendors who can help with that problem. No like and trust might be the decision breaker in that, that situation. But to your point, if you've done your messaging right, the other people don't even come into it because you've, you've differentiated yourself in yeah, that, in that um... moment. I'm going to give you a bit of a hard time, Paul. I'm sure you. I'm sure that's not what you want me to do, but um, I think it's important because you know we talk about no like and trust a lot, and I, I hear it all the time. And it's not invalid, but let's get down to it. If you know, and, and I take your point about video, but I think what video does is make what you're saying seem genuine. You know, it's coming from a real person. It's not some contrived text Authentic. that anybody could have written, uh, including yeah. AI. So it gives you authenticity. The whole likability point, yeah, I, I take it. They have to not dislike you because they'll make emotional decisions if they dislike you, but I'm, I'm not sure they have to actually like you. And, and trust, that, yes, again, but only so far as trusting you to be able to deliver what it is they, at this point of the process, really need. Yeah. And I think it's really important that we don't um, take that out of context purely because you'll see so many people starting businesses and spending lots of time being really friendly. And being friendly doesn't sell. And they'll go to networking events and their, their sole purpose will be to be liked by the people in the room, to, to be trusted by the people in the room. And they totally miss the point. It's not about them and them being liked and, and them being trusted. It's about people in their audience, their prospects, trusting that they will be able to deliver on whatever promises that they've made through that mindset shift. And so it, we, we've got to be careful not to distract ourselves from what's important. And um, typically what we see is lots of people going, oh, I want people to trust me and like me and know me, et cetera. So they'll write all this content and they'll spend lots of time doing it. And, and it might be video content, of course, an extremely powerful media medium um, today. Uh, but they spend all this time creating it, but no time actually focusing on the fact that it's not going to be impactful. It's not going to be effective because their message is totally wrong uh, or they don't have one in the first place. And so it's a slightly dangerous kind of concept that taken out of context can actually lead people down the garden path a little bit i think yeah you've got to be intentional and focused definitely and yeah i, li I like the point about authenticity i couldn't agree more i think in this day and age where ai seems to be pervaded in every space and people are more and more relying on artificial bots and fake messages and and all the rest of the stuff there is there's only really video at this point in time <laughs> maybe in another year we might be on a different conversation i don't know um, maybe my likeness will will be able to uh, <laughs> do my job for me but yeah um moving into the second half of the, the conversation then um what is something that you see people and and usually usually the two are connected right you we, we talked about things that, that are a really good fit for people you've already talked about how you are frustrated with nor like trust and and implementing that in the wrong way or taking it in the wrong context but what's one thing that you wish small business owners would either stop doing or stop doing because everybody else is doing it something that maybe used to work no longer does or maybe something that never worked and it was just a myth i don't know with regards to marketing again really easy one paul uh, i would love it in fact no i would compel people <laughs> in business all sizes of business um, but particularly in startups and micros to stop doing things that aren't working and that's a pretty blanket phrase right but it's very typical that people get caught into patterns and those patterns are established by whatever they've consumed before they started taking action in marketing say for the purpose of this conversation and so as an example you'll see people relentlessly prospecting and posting and engaging on platforms like LinkedIn and on, on wherever they can do it. 
and they'll spend hours and hours and hours a day doing it. And, you know, these the, the myth that this is kind of a an approach is spread by all the, the hundreds of thousands of coaches that have sprung up overnight and purport to be experts in marketing and social marketing and social selling. But you, you find that a lot of these people, they'll they'll be doing that and they kind of take on board that if it's not working, they just need to do it more. And there's so many people out there now that will be spending hours and hours every day um, either crying about the fact that they're not prospecting, engaging and posting, for example, or prospecting, engaging and posting. And in both situations, they won't actually be doing any business or growing any business. And if they are, it's going to be luck. So that's just one example, right? But I think it's very easy to get caught into habitual behavior when we're working our businesses every day. There are only so many hours in the day. And by the time we've sat down and gone through the things we normally do, it leaves very little time to actually decide how we're going to move forwards. And so uh, I'm sure you've had it, Paul, plenty of times, people coming to you and, and they're in the same place that they were three months ago or six months or a year or two or five years ago and they haven't really grown. It's not a new story. The reason for that is primarily because they haven't done the things that they need to do to make a change. Yep. And number one at the top of that list is to stop doing all the things that aren't working. Now, obviously, that requires some sort of metric and this is the bit that people don't like and when they'll switch off, but some sort of metric by which to measure working. And, you know, in its simplest form, if if you're doing something and you're doing it every day and you're not seeing some sort of measurable result for that thing in a in a day or a week or two weeks, maybe a month, then it's time to go back and, and relook at it and decide whether or not that's something that you should or shouldn't be doing. And whether the lack of result is just because you're not doing it very well or because actually it's not something that you need to be doing in the first place. And I'll, I'll quantify that by saying in, in the vast majority of cases in the posting and engaging world, we as a business, for example, stopped posting and engaging overnight. It would probably have a 5% impact. It's negligible. It's a percentage tweak. Now, over a long period of time, it would probably reduce the size of our audience by some um, in terms of sustainable growth and numbers, uh, but it wouldn't destroy our business because businesses are not built on on mechanisms of hope. So I'll couple that. I, I did it on the first question, Paul. I hope you don't mind. I'll couple it and be a little bit cheeky again, but I'll couple that. Stop doing ineffective things in the hope that, and this is number two, and stop hoping that those ineffective things will work. You need to take control. And doing ineffective things and doing things over and over again and not getting anywhere means that you're probably relinquishing control over the future of your business to those activities that are probably based on the hope that they will work. Because if they're not working, there's a reason. Typically, it's because you're not in control of them. And I think, so therefore, number two is, is take control yeah. and take control over everything that you're doing. And if you are unable to identify a way to measure, tangibly measure the impact on your bottom line, and I'm getting into the dry, boring stuff, but it's so important, <laughs> tangibly measure the impact on your bottom line of every activity that you're doing. I'd be questioning you if I was working as a mentor or, or, or somebody giving guidance, I'd be questioning why you're doing it. And if I look at all the businesses that we've grown successfully and the ones that we've grown and sold and the, the businesses that we now work with and the people who are growing fast, they're always the ones who are in complete control. And I'm not just talking about finances. Uh, clearly, everything relates to the bottom line of finance and sales numbers and profitability. But you know, in marketing, we've got more numbers than we could, we could ever wish for. Uh, the key, of course, is figuring out which ones matter and which ones don't and how that fits into the bigger picture and the big machine that is marketing and sales and business. So yeah, those are the two. Perfect. Love it. I guess with, with your, with your first point there, I can relate that back to like everybody's familiar with the analogy of rocks, pebbles, and sand, right? And try to fit them all into a glass jar. And so many business owners I speak to were obsessed with the sand. The sand seems to be all that matters to them. Um, sand doesn't move your business along. Um, pebbles, you know, sometimes we get the pebbles done. We might, we might accomplish a couple of pebbles being broken down on a daily basis. 
but the rocks just seem to languish and it, because we don't want to do them we you know we see the big hard tasks there we assume we don't have the skill set we don't have the money to pay someone to do it for us we we don't really want to have the time to take the time to learn to do it so we don't do them and there and as a result we don't move forward as a business and the first thing i advise anyone is is kind of just break like break a rock every single day put them on your jobs list get them done get it done first thing eat that frog there's another analogy like get them out of the way and done with because by doing that you're moving yourself one step ahead of the competition because the competition won't bother to do them the competition will be sitting back like you are playing with sand it's very much about getting those getting those uncomfortable things done and the more uncomfortable things you get done the more likely you are to differentiate yourself and, and achieve some form of success wherever that looks like so I can yeah I can I can definitely gel with with uh, a lot of what you've said there Nick I think to come back to the second part a little bit more I think that part can be quite hard and I, and that's where I tell a lot of people is you know sometimes you need an outside perspective when you think of a novelist a novelist doesn't write their own blurb on their dust jacket cover they get somebody to come in read through the book and then summarize it in three paragraphs because with the best will in the world you don't know what what the micro details are because you're so lost in the weeds of whatever you're doing and same with messaging sometimes as well when we when we look back to what you said in that first part um you know sometimes it's very very hard to succinctly talk about our own business and i know it's something i had to get external support with in terms of how i talk about what we do in a way that people resonate with on how to create an emotional connection to oh i understand what problem this solves Actually, my biggest pet here is when I look on LinkedIn and somebody's headline starts with, I help, I'm gone, switched <laughs> off, I'm done. Everybody helps someone. That's the whole point. Like, I help, you just wasted two words of, your, of, of five that, that, that are really, really important to you. Stop, stop trying to tell people that you help them and just tell them how you help them. But like, there's lots more to it than and just think, that. Obviously, that's an example. Yeah. But. And, and to that example, that's kind of an interesting example, Paul, because, you know, 10 years ago when the platform was le much less mature and much less saturated, people were using those kind of headlines. And actually, they, they were probably working because it was novel and people were receptive to communication from people by on LinkedIn because it was it's all it's all kind of exciting and organic and growing from, you know, it was the new business platform. Um, but now, of course, it's much more saturated. And and this, again, it leans into some of the points that we've already talked about in terms of psychology and the mindset of our audiences. If you write things like I help or helping in the front of your professional headline, somebody who's receiving a message is going to know instantly that you're going to sell to them. And, you know, it's the best way of putting people off. And I think yeah. we need to spend more time in the minds of a, it's a, it's an age old cliche. We, you know, we've been talking about it in marketing for long before I was born, uh, but it's a, it's so important that we we focus on and get to understand the psychology and the mindset of our audiences so that we can actually engage with them in a way that's perhaps just going to get a few more interested than, like you say, the other people who are doing the same thing and just splurting or, information all over the or place. Or alternatively, it's going to put people off because that's the other thing that people are afraid to do, put people off. And you mentioned it earlier on. Stop having so many bad fit people in your pipeline. Like if you can explain why you shouldn't work with someone, then you should explain why you wouldn't work with them and, and put them onto somebody who they would work with. Because otherwise you're just wasting your time and their time on a bad fit that they will eventually churn anyway. So would you rather, you know, have that experience of them being a bad fit customer and walking away from you and, and having a negative opinion or put them off in the first place in the hopes that they'll become a champion or a fan and refer other people to you. And that's something I'm you know, I'm super conscious of with when I when I talk to people about especially video, right? The best way to tell people how you don't work with people because you don't come across like a like you don't come across aggressive like you can in tech. When you say we don't work with pe these sorts of people, you can show that genuinely I I don't work with for for me, for example, it's people who want leads within 30 days from their video. It doesn't doesn't really work like that. You know, you've got to you've got to get a certain amount of video out there to help them understand, and you've got to go through the process. It takes, you know, it kicks two, three, four months onwards to start building that consistent revenue. Don't come to me if you want results today, and I say that all the time. Like when I first started working in that space, like what a year ago, I get people coming in all the time. I had to really hard qualify people because they hadn't listened to everything I had to say about how we work with people. They hadn't consumed enough information. 
the information probably wasn't out there in a way they understood it. My messaging was poor. And so as a result, they were coming knocking on the door in the hopes I could solve their problems and I couldn't. So yeah, look, well, look, Nick, I've really enjoyed the conversation that we've had today. I think there's, there's probably a part two to be had somewhere down the line in a, in a few months. So you're welcome back on the show at some point in the future. And um, if people want to reach out to you, Nick, what's the best way to contact you and Pipeline 44? The best way to contact me is, is probably on LinkedIn and, and ping a message into my inbox and say hello. Um, and uh, as long as it doesn't start with some kind of cheesy, I cheesy, <laughs> I help businesses line, it, it, it might get read. Uh, no, it'll get read. Um, I'm fairly active on there and the team back me up. So, um, so that's the best, best way to reach me. Um, Pipeline 44 is an interesting one when it comes to what we're doing. The brands that we're focusing on building, the social selling secrets and social selling suite brands um, are pretty much out there. They're all over the place. So again, hop on the platform, click the links, tap social selling secrets in the bar and, you, and you'll, you'll find out a, a bit more about that. Fantastic. But yeah, I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. No problem. Thanks for joining us for this week's episode and I will see you again next Wednesday.